Okay, today we're in section 4.6, fit a line to data. Section 4.6, fit a line to data. Before, you model situations involving a constant rate of change. Now, you will make scatter plots and write equations to model data. Key vocabulary, scatter plot, correlation, line of fit. A scatter plot is a graph used to determine whether there is a relationship between paired data. Scatter plots can show trends in the data. Look at this graph here. If y tends to increase as x increases, the paired data are said to have a positive correlation. This would be considered a positive correlation. In other words, as x is increasing, so is y. If y tends to decrease as x increases, the paired data are said to have a negative correlation. So as x is increasing, y is decreasing. So once again, if y tends to decrease as x is increasing, notice x is increasing while the y values are decreasing. It is said to have a negative correlation. If x and y have no apparent relationship, the paired data are said to have relatively no correlation. So here the data is scattered. You can't tell what's what. So once again, positive correlation, negative correlation, no correlation. Example 1. Describe the correlation of the data. Describe the correlation of the data graph in the scatter plot. A. This is our scatter plot right here. Hours of studying. Test scores. The scatter plot shows a positive correlation between hours of studying and test scores. This means that as the hours of studying increase, the test scores tend to also increase. Graph B, hours of televisions watched, test scores. The scatter plot shows a negative correlation between hours of television watched and test scores. This means that as the hours of television watch increase, the test scores tended to decrease. So now notice, when there were zero hours, scores were high. As we increase the hours, the scores tend to go down. As the hours increase, the scores go down. So that would be a negative correlation. Example 2, make a scatter plot. Swimming speeds. The table shows the length in centimeters and swimming speeds in centimeters per second of six fish. Got a fish, got the fish type, got pike, red gnard, black bass, gnard, Norway, haddock. Length 37.8, 19.2, 21.3, 26.2 and 26.8 speed 148 47 88 131 and 98 a make a scatter plot of the data b describe the correlation of the data solution a treat the data as ordered pairs let x represent the fish length in centimeters and let y represent the speed in centimeters per second Plot the ordered pairs as points in a coordinate plane. So after you plot your points, remember now the length is in centimeters, that's your x value. Speed is your y value. So you plot each point. B. The scatter plot shows a positive correlation, which means that longer fish tend to swim faster. Modeling data. When data show a positive or negative correlation, you can model the trend in the data using a line of fit. Key concept, using a line of fit to model data. Step one, make a scatter plot of the data. 
Step 2. Decide whether the data can be modeled by a line. Step 3. Draw a line that appears to fit the data closely. There should be approximately as many points above the line as below it. Step 4. Write an equation using two points on the line. The points do not have to represent actual data pairs, but they must lie on the line of fit. Once again, the points do not have to represent actual data points, but they must lie on the line of fit. Example 3. Write an equation to model data. Bird populations. The table shows the number of active red cockadee woodpecker clusters in a part of the Soto National Forest in Mississippi. Write an equation that models the number of active clusters as a function of the number of years since 1990. Alright, in looking at that table, we can see that the years go from 1992 through 2000. Active clusters 22, 24, 27 in 1994 and 27 again in 1995. 34, 40, 42, 45, and 51. Solution Step 1. Make a scatter plot of the data. Let X represent the number of years since 1990. Let Y represent the number of active clusters. Alright, now notice on your graph, here is 1992. So that means this has to be 91 and then 0. Notice nothing's potted there. All right, so 1992, you had uh, uh, 22 active clusters. So there's 20. So the blue is representing the 22. All right. In 1993, there was 23. So it's a little bit higher. See that? 1994, you were at 27. And notice that 1995 was also 27. 1996 was 34. There's 35, so 34 got to be a little bit below it. All right, 1997, that was 40, so that's right on the line. 1998, that was 42, so slightly above 40. 1999, that was 45. 1999 was 45, that's where we are right there on the line. Okay, in the year 2000 was 51, so that's slightly above 50. All right, so step two, decide whether the data can be modeled by a line. Because the scatter plot shows a positive correlation, you can fit a line to the data. All right, once again, a positive correlation. And don't forget the Y's is, is our active uh, clusters. Step three, draw a line that appears to fit the points in the scatter plot closely. Now, what that means is, you must draw a line in such a way that the numbers of points above the line are about the same as the number of points below the line. So if you look right here, points below the line would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Points above the line would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's as close as they can get it. Now your line would be slightly different. But as long as the uh, points above the line and below the line are close. Okay. Next, step four. Write an equation using two points on the line. So you're going to use two points on the line. Two points on the line. Now notice, two points on the line may not be uh, these points here. See, two points on the line could be like here. That's one that you chose. Uh, and maybe, um, well, right here is good enough, right? Two points on the line. Okay, now once again, one of the points they used was 2 and 20. All right, 2 and 20. And another point they used was 8 and 42. So let's look at 8 and 42. 8 and 42. Now bear in mind, you could have used any two points you want as long as they are on the line. So they use 8 and 42. 42 because it's on the line. All right. 42 is on the line. Okay. So now we're going to write an equation using two points on the line. 
So once again, we're using 2 and 20, 8 and 42. Find the slope of the line. So slope is what? y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And that's going to equal to 42 minus 20 over 8 minus 2. 42 minus 20 over 8 minus 2. Alright. Now, that ends up being 22 over 6. And that ends up being 11 over 3 after you reduce it down. Alright, now for those of you who may be a little bit confused on the slope, don't forget. You use your formula. You label your points so you don't get lost. Alright, so what's the y2 value? The y2 value is 42. What's the y1 value? The y1 value is 20. The x2 value is 8. And the x1 value was 2. So once again, 42 minus 20 is 22. 8 minus 2 is 6. And 22 over 6 when reduced comes out to be 11 over 3. Okay, after you find the slope, now find the y-intercept of the line. Use point 220. Use the point 220. So y is equal to ms plus b. That's the slope intercept form. Substitute 11 over 3 for m, 2 for x, and 20 for y. So y is 20. m is 11 over 3. x was 2. And b we don't know. Solve for b. After solving for b, you come out with 38 over 3 is equal to b. So an equation of the line of fit is y is equal to 11 over 3 times x plus 38 over 3. So then the number y of active woodpecker cluster can be modeled by the function y is equal to 11 over 3 times x plus 38 over 3 where x is the number of years since 1990. All right, for those of us who are confused on how we came out or how they came out with 38 over 3 for B all right this is going to take a combination of your algebra and a lot of your old fourth fifth and sixth grade math and working with fractions all right so here we go we're going to break it down for you you got 20 is equal to 11 over 3 times 2 but don't forget that's really 2 over 1 plus B all right, so now you got 20 is equal to 11 times 2, that's 22. 3 times 1, that's 3, plus B. All right, now you want to get this B by itself, so you got to remove that 22 over 3. But before I do, because I realize I got a, a whole number over here, I'm going to convert this to a mixed number to make it easier for me to do my subtraction. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 22 over 3 as a mixed number. Now, how did I do that? Once again, third, fourth, fifth grade math. So, I got 22 over 3. So, I got 3 going into 22. 3 goes into 22, 7. 7 times 3 is 21. 22 minus 21 is 1. So, my final answer then is 7 and 1 third. 7 and 1 third. So, in place of 22 over 3, I'm going to use 7 and 1 third. So, now my equation reads 20 is equal to 7 and 1 third plus B. I want to get B by itself. So therefore the 7 and 1 third must leave. So I'm going to say a negative 7 and 1 third on this side and a negative 7 and 1 third on this side. On this side. So what happens? This cancels out. That's gone. And so B is going to equal to whatever 20 minus 7 and 1 third is. Alright, so let's go over here and do our math for 20 minus 7 and 1 third. Once again, a review or repeat of earlier math. Alright, so now I got 20 minus 7 and 1 third. There's nothing there to work with, so I got to cross this out, make that 19. Well, when I made it 19, I'm borrowing 1. Alright, if I borrow 1, I got to put it back as a 1 as a fraction. So my, my denominator here is 3, so I, I got to put this back as 3 over 3. 3 over 3 would give me 1. Now, what's 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3? That's going to be 2 over 3. Was 19 minus 7? That's going to be 12. Okay, now what's 3 times 12? That's 36. What's 36 plus 2? That's 38. So I end up with 38 over 3. That's what they have here. And that's what we end up with here. 38 over 3. Once again, 12 times 3 plus 2.